Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on another episode of Debt Collection 101 here on Our Bite You. And joining with us today is Tim Collins from True Accord in San Francisco, California. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Thanks for having me, Michael. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. Yeah, so uh, we'll just start off with, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, and then we'll uh, we'll dive into what we're kind of talking about today. Yeah, I'll try to keep it short. Uh, I've been in the industry for 27 years. I've basically done it all. So I started off at a litigation law firm, commercial side, uh, and then we moved over to consumer side. From there, I went to uh, debt buyer, um, and then I uh, was a general counsel at a, a, a small agency that grew to about 600 people. Before I decided, I thought I'd go over to the creditor side and see what it was like over there, which was interesting. And then I came back to an agency before coming here to True Accord, which is really sort of messages my two loves, which is technology and um, the accounts receivable management industry. So very yeah. excited, very excited yeah. to be talking about you guys today. Yeah, you guys opened up a, a new branch as well, so I just wanted to see how that was going with you guys. Yeah, Linux is, is going great. So it's it's meeting, it's exceeding our expectations just in growth. We're well positioned for tax season. Uh, so we're excited about that. So we've got an opportunity to expand uh, there. We've got some some rights of first refusal and some additional space, but I've been really excited about uh, how that branch is, is taking off because we really get the uh, industry expertise in that area. There's a lot of big call centers over there. Um, some of them are shut down. So we're able to tap into some of the best best of the best there. So yeah, that's awesome. Right. Yeah, so uh, what we're gonna talk about is just how texting is being used right now. It's kind of a growing trend. So uh, I was hoping you give us some background being in the compliance area of what it's looking at. So what are some, some current rules or guidelines surrounding texting as a form of outreach? Yes, great question. I wish there was a bright light rule that we could just say, follow this rule and you're fine. Um, unfortunately, there's uh, the, the, the Telephone Consumer Protection Act is the number one act that people are going to have to follow. There's some state equivalents, but I think for time, we'll just talk at the federal level, keep it simple. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of litigation around um, the TCPA, and it's really around auto dialing. So, auto dialing phone calls. Um, the key piece to anything that relates to the TCPA, in my mind, from a con compliance perspective, is consent, right? Mm -hmm. But we need, I think we need to change that term because we keep saying we need consent, uh, you know, consent to email, consent for e-sign, consent. But really what we really want to talk about is we want to shift that, especially for the regulators, to be more about consumer preference. So capturing consumer preference uh, is, makes it a little bit bigger, right? This is the way that con consumers want to communicate with you. So for the TCPA, first and foremost, you have to start with consent capturing that consent in the uh, accounts receivable management space most of the time michael that's done by the creditor themselves they capture it on the application an online process or somewhere in the life of the account and then as an agency we step into their shoes mm -hmm. and we, we start we start acting on their behalf i think we've had a missed opportunity um, as it relates to consent because there's no reason a debt collection agency can't capture consent for itself Right, so that way, because if you, especially if you see consumers over and over again, maybe for different products, because you have m multiple verticals in your space, you could have consent for that consumer yourself as an agency. So, capturing that consumer preference, you know, as an agency, is going to be crucial going forward. Without that, you have a tremendous amount of exposure. Five hundred dollars for the first uh, text without consent. Um, and it's every every text thereafter. That's the first time, and and then after that, it goes all the way up to fifteen hundred dollars uh, per text. So the exposure. Yeah. Is really great. Oh. So is, is texting currently being ruled like a phone call right now? I think the the CFPB is not necessarily looking at it that way um, because they grouped it with email when they came out with the rule um, that uh, CFPB NPRM. Um, and so it's interesting that they've kind of grouped those two together. So it makes it look like it's not because they've given unlimited texting and unlimited email. It's mm -hmm. being done for a phone. Um, it's, it's not in a different medium like an email would be or a direct message or one of those. So I would say that's probably why the industry is going towards SMS. They're very good with phones. 
So let's just one step over is just to send a text message on a phone. Yeah. So, so if you are implementing text messaging uh, in your agency, um, how do you, how would you want your collectors to be able to handle those text messages? Would you like them to have like conversations with the with the debtor, or uh, just be able to inbound uh, handle that message? I think <clears throat> you're going to find both. I think the agencies are going to start out with saying we're going to use text messaging to drive inbound phone calls, right? Because yep. to set up a two-way communication, they want to use it as one-way communication. To set up two-way communication, you have to look at a lot of, you know, like revocation. There's a consumer that could tell you, stop texting me, right? And so you yep. have to account for that going forward. But if you think about it, it's, it's call centers are using inbound calls or outbound calls. So that's how the business model is going to look to start. They just want to be able to send out a bunch of texts that will turn around and drive a bunch of inbound phone calls. I don't want to deal with the real text messages that come in. And so we see that with email with a lot of agencies. They'll email out, but if you can't email back, it's, it still has that message in there, this is not an email address you can reply to. And I think that's a missed opportunity. I think if, if agencies were to go out and look at the number of consumers that are trying to text their other members, they would be surprised. Um, they're just not getting those texts. So. Initial first phase, Michael is going to be all outbound, hoping to drive inbound. What you're going to see, though, is there's a whole generation that grew up on text messaging. Maybe that Gen yeah. Y, not really the Gen X, but before Gen Z. So they're going to want it. They're going to fire a response right back. And the crucial compliance piece of that is going to be able to figure out which ones are revoking consent. Because text messaging is, a, is probably less intrusive than, than a phone call but more intrusive than an email. And some people take text messaging very personally. So it's like, that's my personal space. The only people that text me are the people I let text me. So now we're in that space. So we're going to see a high level of people revoking consent. And that's yeah. really going to be key going forward, is how do you manage those so you don't send another text message and expose yourself under the TCPA? Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to ask you next was, how would you contact like a, uh, a debtor that you don't have a pre-existing relationship with and what would need to be in that text message for it to be compliant or effective? Wow, <clears throat> great loaded question. We're going to assume there's, there's consent that's already been captured yeah. at, at the creditor level. Today, there's some services out there that you can that you can scrub those numbers and it'll tell you, is it an iPhone, Android, Sprint, AT&T? So that'll kind of help gauge, you know, where you're going to be from a message. Uh, a lot of consumers now have smartphones. I think 81% of Americans have smartphones. So you're probably pretty safe there to be able to make a bigger uh, message, if you will. But yeah. there, there's no clear, you know, this is a communication into it, you know, to attempt a debt. Uh, we, we leave certain messages now, uh, voice messages, that don't qualify as an attempt to collect the debt, right? We're just seeking location information or something along those lines. So you don't have to have all the disclosures. And that's really where people are running into this. Well, how am I gonna get, you know, California's disclosure in there and a statute of limitations disclosure in there? And really what I want, what I think you should do is you should start with a pretty easy state and maybe do a message that is not debt collection messaging. Uh, and then see how it works from there. And then you can expand. You can say, how do I do disclosures? There's a new company out there that I just heard about called um, SendRight, it's N-D-R-I-G-H-T. They have the ability to send a text message with a JPEG attached. And in that JPEG, which is just a picture, right? It's a picture of the letter that the consumer could get. So all the disclosures and everything are captured in there. So that's one way to do it if you were trying to use this as cost savings. But I don't think text message by itself is a great idea for tech, for, for cost savings just because of the text restrictions. But putting in there, you know, attempt to, this is an attempt to collect a debt so the consumer actually knows that that's what it is. Some of those minimum disclosures are the things you're going to have to have. And it's really going to come down to you know, the debt that you're working in whatever state that you're working and then working with outside counsel to be able to make sure you get those right disclosures. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I know you, you have to do that when you're sending out any form of mailing. So I was wondering if it would be kind of the same with texting, seeing it is it's 
essentially the same thing. Yes, you know, you make up, you bring up a good point because some people would say, you know, you clearly clearly have a letter on one end of the spectrum, and then mm -hmm. you have a phone call on the other, and text messaging kind of falls in between the two because it could be a conversation. I could say, hey, this is uh, ABC Collection Agency texting you about your debt. You have this is an attempt to collect the debt. Blah blah blah. I'll give you some disclosures. Then you could text me back and say, hey, how much do I owe? Now it starts to look like a conversation, and then I could text you back back depending on the internal you know procedures that you've created call me here's what you owe and here's a link to pay it you know there's all those things so now it starts to look more like this conversation so, yeah so yeah what i what i've seen kind of um just from having conversations with a few agencies is they wouldn't necessarily want it to be a form of collecting immediately they would want it as a form of payment reminder yes which, Michael, is a great idea. So as the consumer sets up their payment, right, there's a great time to be able to capture consent for your agency, right? that phone number for your agency. So then you could say, okay, hey, do you want payment reminders? And that's a great place to start because they've opted in to you, accepted your terms of service, and you're giving them specifics like here's how you opt out if you want to opt out later, but we'll send you these reminders. But that is that is a great place to be able to start. Then you start to build this database, right, of consumers with phone numbers, but you're going to have to continue to scrub, you know, to make sure that with number portability that that number is staying with that consumer. But then you've now got, okay, now you, you're maybe six or nine months down the road and you want to send out some text messages on a new debt and you can tie it back to that phone number. You might want to look at that and say, okay, can we send a text message on that on this? And that really is going to come down to your, you know, risk uh, appetite. But there's yeah. definitely an opportunity if they've given the agency that uh, consumer preference, that consent. Yeah, yeah, and um, just just kind of like in your opinion, do you, do you think that this is going to be like a trend that sticks, or do you think it's going to be something that might fall off? I know, uh, just slightly like a big fad last year was voicemail drops, and now. Right. You and hear about them everyone's just talking about texting so is this a form that's actually going to stick or like where do you see it going so i think it's gonna i think it's gonna stick michael i think you're absolutely right it's gonna come out out of the gates hopefully pretty strong uh with right party contacts continuing to drop agencies are gonna have to go to something um emails difficult to do at scale so text messaging is not difficult to do at scale I think the problem is going to be what we're seeing, um, like under the Trace Act that just passed uh, and was signed into law. That covers SMS too, so it covers text messaging. So what I think you're going to see happening is there's going to be this rush to text message, and you're going to see the carriers or the consumers are going to start complaining, and then the carriers are going to start to put in what we've seen for these robocalls. You know. Yep. But they're gonna things are gonna get start to get marked as spam. So your text messages are not gonna go through, you know. With a with a uh, with a spam as an example on, on an Apple phone, that could be sent right to voicemail and never rings. Then you have the choice of when you want to go and look at it, or listen to it. Text messaging, we don't have that capability. There's no voicemail for text messaging. So more likely, those text messages are gonna get blocked. So to yeah. your point, I think probably there's a beautiful 12 to 18 months, depending upon when the agency start to pick up SMS, where SMS will be very, very effective. And then you're going to see some of the robo callers and some of the, um, you know, the, the people that are illegitimate calls, but they're going to move over to text too. And yeah, that's when it's going to get start to get blocked. So I would say it's probably a heyday of 12 to 18 months of SMS assuming that the industry is going to move to it because a lot of them are afraid of the TCPA. Yeah. Uh, so it's there. So that may change a little bit, but you start seeing uh, those spam text messages, you're going to know that, okay, this is the start of kind of the end where they're going to put some restrictions in and, and sending a text message is going to be very much like sending a phone call, which is very much like sending an email, you know, mm -hmm. can't be like spam has to be unique, all those things. So, yeah. And I got, uh, I have one more question for you. Just, just what kind of advice would you give an agency who's either looking into or just beginning to um, start up implementing texting? 
in either a compliance aspect or, or what do you think they need to be what they would need to know while considering that okay great question i think first and foremost is really understanding your risk appetite because you gave a great example michael about you could start off on the payment reminder side great place to start low risk you capture consent and then expand from there depending mm -hmm. upon your risk appetite though you could easily you know verify that your clients have consent and when and when i when i talk about consent i always talk to clients about well what's the process for revocation of consent and if they don't talk about that they have a process then that should be a red flag to you because that means there's consumers in there that probably have revoked consent that the the creditor is just not telling you about so you have potential exposure there but i would start with okay what's your risk appetite and figure out buckets where you could start you know start off with the policies and procedures it's about consumer preference more so than just consent it's a bigger bigger world when you use the word consumer preference how do you capture that for your agency and then slowly build on that program but i think the number one thing that people are going to miss is that capturing you know uh the revocation of consent yeah and where agencies are going to get exposed because there is a company out there called um, augusta.ai and what they do is they build they built this um, process where they look at all the text messages that comes back and right now they they their um, claim is that there's about 13,000 ways to say stop texting. And so capture, using a tool like that can really help you capture those ones. Okay, we're not gonna text that number again unless we get consent either through a website or somebody gives us consent over the phone or one of those things. So no matter what program you build, you know, capturing uh, the revocation of consent is gonna be, is gonna be what's gonna set the good agencies apart from the great agencies so all right yeah is there is there anything any other like ideas or anything that you want to talk about for uh, just on the topic of, of texting and sms well i think it's 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 consumer preference right now we're looking at texting you talked about voice drops and agencies are still using voice drops there's some good cases that are coming out there people are using ATSs. You know, because there's many cases that are out there. Again, it's it's around that consumer preference. So if you can capture, maybe that consumer wants direct messages from Twitter, right? Maybe you're not ready to do that, but you can capture that information so that you have it for the future. Or I always joke in the presentations that I do, Michael, it's about Snapchat. Somehow we have to figure out how do we Snapchat you all your rights. You know, you look at it for ten seconds. You know, uh, you pay us all via Snapchat. But be thinking about more than just text messaging. Think about email, direct messaging. That's WhatsApp, Messenger, all of those other channels that are coming. Because what we're going to find in the future, it's really going to be driven by consumers. They're really going to tell you how they want to be communicated with, and there's going to be a hundred different channels. And you're going to have to be in most of them in order to capture as much as you want to be able to capture. And that's just what we know now. Who knows what the next channel is going to be? Yeah, so, yeah. Technology moves pretty quick. It is moving faster and faster. Yeah. Nice to be a technology company. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, yeah. So thank you for all your insight on that, and uh, thank you for your time. It was great. It really helps us out a lot too, as well, to see what uh, what the industry wants with uh, with texting. Yeah, anytime, Michael. It's always great talking with you guys. All right, thank you.